All right, guys. So I got some good news for you. Some good news. Um, we're seeing a giant number of gains when it comes to unions. It really is the one thing that's giving, um, you know, a lot of people in the movement hope. And uh, I love that. I love that. It's a spark that's turning into a wildfire. So first I want to show you, here's the situation on the ground with Verizon. And this is a great video from More Perfect Union where they talk to Verizon workers and they tell you what their experience is and they tell you what they're trying to do. So let's take a look at that and then I'll give you the update on the story. I've made less money every year for nine years in a row. Verizon made up four and a half billion dollars in profit, but they're taking up to 40% in hard earned commission check from their frontline employees. This year, our, our raises were essentially pay cuts. They were almost meaningless compared to the uh, cost of living increase. You can't schedule family events, doctor's appointments, or any kind of stable living. Uh, it's all focused around the chaotic nature of Verizon's schedule. Our management was completely unaware that we were organizing this union. We caught them totally off guard when we went public with the union. I CC'd them on the email to, uh, to Hans uh, just to, to let them know that we were organizing. So immediately, the day after, I sent an email to Hans Vesper, uh, the CEO of Verizon. Um, they flew out uh, a union buster the next day. I've been told by management that I should be grateful for what I have and I should be grateful for the pay I have because it's a lot better than uh, what other people are getting. I think the team is doing a great job and, and as I said, I mean, you see it in the numbers right now. Even if you compare to 2019, we're up on every metric. I see my co-workers struggle to pay rent. I see my co-workers uh, living at work more than they live at their homes. I see my coworkers struggling to support their families and it makes me sick to my stomach to think that the people that aren't living at Verizon are thriving and buying fancy cars and able to have families, able to go to school. Verizon has systematically sort of uh, taken away all of our support in the stores. When I first started nine years ago, uh, we had a ton of support in our store. We had, you know, three assistant managers. We had operations specialists in each store. Uh, we had a GM for each store. And over the years, Verizon has, you know, laid off the operations people. Verizon's laid off our experience reps who used to greet our customers and make our, our store flow better. And they just handed out those responsibilities to, to those that were left. And they didn't hand out their pay. Verizon just kept that for themselves. They can move us around from one location to another location without us really having a say to do or choose. We just want more of a say in our own livelihood, uh, better work-life balance. I experienced uh, being cornered, being isolated, a threats, um, threats in the sense of a threat with a smile, unspoken rules, um, passive aggression. They do a year, well, almost more than yearly uh, campaign of just anti-union training. You know, what to do if somebody approaches you with a card the, the, to sign up for a union. This union card may be legally binding. You know, don't, don't trust anything that the CWA says, basically. It's pretty easy to tell when someone's being manipulative, but they came in to use my values, my traumas, and my life against me to change my mind because they didn't want me to make a union. They didn't want me to support something that could help me. They were convincing me that what I thought was right was not right. Starbucks workers right now are such a huge inspiration because it's one of the biggest companies. Like, everybody goes to Starbucks, everybody knows where Starbucks is. They are similar, similarly situated to us. There are a lot of small stores. We're not, we're not organizing, you know, a thousand people in a warehouse. We're organizing, you know, 10 people, two stores at a time, pretty much. If we can get more, more of us together, joined together, um, we can make a lot more changes. It's, it's time to stand up. Uh, it's time to uh, talk to your coworkers. The more stores that stand up and, and join us and have a voice with us, the more power we'll have at the bargaining table to get what we truly deserve. So there you go. That's beautiful. Now the update is, let's throw this up on screen here. Andrew Perez says, Verizon workers in two Washington state stores just won a sweeping victory despite an aggressive union busting campaign by the company. Uh, and then they have an article in Lever News about it. And then you can see Verizon Union says, we won 11 to 1. The Everett and Linwood stores are now unionized. Uh, so unionized with CWA. So um, look, snowball effect, baby. Started with Starbucks. Um, the last four Starbucks union elections, not only did they win, they won unanimously. Starbucks is desperate. They got rid of the old CEO and brought back in Howard Schultz, who's now doing an aggressive union busting campaign. But everything I've seen so far is that it's backfiring. It's backfiring. The tactics are way too heavy handed. 
um, literally talks about an outside organization is trying to take our workers, and this is like an assault on companies. They're not buying it. And one of the issues, in terms of Starbucks, one of the issues is, Crystal made this point, it's, so like a lot of the people who work at Starbucks were Bernie people, and a lot of the people who work at Starbucks are from sort of like almost upper middle class backgrounds, and they're, they've been like educated on union stuff to a, a pretty high degree, and so they could see through everything that's happening. And also, the way, the way the job market is right now, people can, you know, if for whatever reason something takes a turn for the worse, they can find another job. And so they're willing to risk things and they're willing to stand in solidarity and they're willing to fight back. And look, snowball effect, man. You have Starbucks unions are, are forming all over the place. You have the Amazon labor union that just won with Chris Smalls in Staten Island. Now, there is another Amazon labor union uh, vote coming up. It's, I believe, the warehouse across the street. And I think it's on April 25th. Now, don't be too discouraged if that one doesn't go the right way. Don't be too discouraged. That doesn't mean we're doomed to failure. There's been massive uh, number of successes recently. Um, I think there's been a 57% increase in union drives this year. The NLRB right now is not hostile. It was very hostile under Donald Trump. It is not hostile right now. It's actually one of the better arguments. This is the point that Crystal makes all the time. She ended up voting for Joe Biden, and she said her main issue, apart from the Supreme Court, was she's huge on, huge on unions, and the NLRB that's now in place as a result of Biden is just not hostile to unions anymore. They're just not hostile. Now, we can go after Biden specifically for he just virtue signals around unions and doesn't lift a finger to do anything. They let the PRO Act die like it was nothing. Um, so there's criticisms of Biden on the union front, but there's not nearly as many on the NLRB front. It's just way better than Trump's and it's facilitating a lot of these unions around the country. So, um, it's wonderful. It's great. It looks like the revolution is here in terms of unionization. Again, don't get discouraged by setbacks. There might be setbacks every now and then, but, uh, we keep moving forward. And what people realized is, I think it was a matter of necessity. People looked around and realized, ain't nobody coming to save us. There's no Calvary. You know, Washington is is useless to a large extent. The Democrats are pathetic. Republicans are actively hostile to unions. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they looked at the people in their workplaces and they were like, let's try this thing. And so it's, it's all positive, man. It's all positive. And I wish all these unions nothing but the best. And I hope they keep winning victories. And uh, this is this is the new thing. This is the new thing. This is the... This is the hope that people have been waiting for ever since, you know, Bernie's movement sort of fell apart. We wanted something. The left is tired of moral victories. We wanted something that was tangible and real. And here, now we have it. Now we have it. So let's keep building on it. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.